Welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. This week, we're very happy to have actor Jennifer Esposito, uh, who's starring, co-starring in um, Somewhere in Queens with Ray Romano and Lori Metcalf. It's opening April 21st. Jennifer, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I believe today is your birthday. You know, everybody believes it is as well, but oh. it's not. It's actually the 19th, but oh. I'll say happy birthday anyway. All right, well, happy birthday early. Thank man. you. I, I thought the timing was pretty pretty funny if it, if it was true. I know, but yeah, uh, let's say it anyway. All right. Uh, well, first, you know, let me, let's talk a little bit about Somewhere in Queens. How did you first get approached to be in it? Um, it was, you know, like anything else was, uh, Hey, Ray, you know, there's a, there's a script they want you to read. And I knew it was, a, a Ray's, uh, Ray's, first, uh, writing and directing, um, endeavor. And I was actually in the process of doing that myself. And, um, um, uh, my film is, is now finished and, uh, hopefully going to go the same road as Ray's, but I thought it was really important to support um, another actor getting into this this other side of the business so and I love the script and uh yeah and then I aud auditioned and wound up getting it okay cool did you know Ray by before by I knew case? him through people through people but we had never met okay yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure because I mean you're both uh from back east and yeah you're both actors and yeah you kind of came up around the same time so yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I didn't know, I didn't know Ray, um, personally, but we knew we had friends, uh, in common. Okay. Yeah. So what, uh, tell me a little bit of what's your, who's your character and, and tell me about how, how the character fits into the story. She's, um, she's a Ray's, uh, neighbor, but they're, they're him and his brother are working on my house. And I think, um, she's, a little bit lonely she lost her husband and um kind of sparks up some conversation with ray yeah okay. i don't want to give too much away okay i got you yeah. uh what what was the filming like yeah I, I know you guys uh shot this around two years ago maybe a little more yeah 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 it takes it takes a while with an independent film um yeah, yeah no we shot it um i think it, you know your regular um independent film usually you know month long shoot and you know it's always quick and tight and you need to move and uh that's what we did and he did a great job being behind you know on the other side and also being in the movie so um i was just happy to support really was okay yeah um and have you seen the final uh, the final product yeah of course of course it's great I mean it's so fun he, he really did exactly what he set out to do when yeah. I read it that's exactly what I saw being from Italian family he hit it on the head <laughs> yeah um and you know and you, you got some others uh people in there like I said Lori Metcalf uh, oh, she's amazing Ma yeah. Sebastian Maniscalco's in mm -hmm. it um who he's coming out with his own film about being in an Italian family himself right. which looks hysterical. Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, obviously, you, I'm guessing you had to draw on being Italian, being from New York. Um, you know, how, uh, how, how much did you have to kind of pull from your past history? It w wasn't hard. This role yeah. wasn't something that was so difficult because I am from, you know, uh, like you said, from the East and, and uh, East Coast and being an Italian family, there's there's just things, you know, and she is an Italian woman. Um, you know, there's a loneliness to her that um, because it's a it's a it's a dramedy, you know, it's funny, but there's this heart there, you yeah. know, that's always a very um, fine line um, and it's a very specific tone so that's always something you have to think about so you, it's about getting to the core of who the character is and do that in a real way rather than go for laughs um and then let if it's funny let let that lay kind of on top so that yeah. that's, that's the way i approach things like this okay yeah um 
Well, let, let's talk a little bit. Tell me about your film. I mean, uh, what can you tell me about it? Uh, when when do you expect it to come out? You know, that's yeah. Like um, I've been working on it for God knows, seems like a lifetime. It's um, it's a it's a look of the female uh, eyes in a mafia family. And it's something we've really never seen before. We always see the male point of view, but we really never see the female point of view. And it's taken from the 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 daughter's point of view, two sisters in a mafia family. And yeah. it's a basic, it's basically about being born into a space or a slot. And what if you don't want to be? Right. Um, and what are your choices? And that's what the movie's about. And uh, I wrote it, directed it, produced it. I'm in it. Um, and we should be going to the festival circuit soon. Okay, great. What's it called? Yeah. It's called Fresh Kills. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it, is it set in like a modern time period or no, it's No, it's set in uh, late 80s, early okay. 90s. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Probably like the, the last heyday of yeah, the Italian That's exactly mafia. right. That's exactly right. It was when like that, you know, there was a big progression from Brooklyn over to Staten Island. And that's that's the whole that's the whole beginning of the film. We're moving from Brooklyn to Staten Island. Interesting. Is there anybody else that uh, our, my audience might know who was in it? Yeah, um, Dominic Lombardozzi, who okay. uh, you, you probably know from so many things. The Wire, he was in the Irish. Everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Annabella Sciorra. Oh, I love Annabella. Um, Anna, yeah, she's fantastic. Odessa Azion, who um, uh, uh, she's been in a bunch of stuff. She's a young she's going to be a huge huge star as is the rest of the, the young people in the cast emily bader um nick cirillo who's in um oh my god big show out right now well, david Alcano. yeah yeah a bunch of young people that you'll totally know okay awesome, awesome. yeah uh well well I'm definitely eager to see what that looks like when when it's ready to come out yeah absolutely uh well tell us a little about i mean you know i i, I you're pretty low key, I think, for the most part. You did write a book, mm -hmm. uh, but that was mostly about uh, figuring out that you had celiac disease. Yeah. Um, what What do you think our audience? What do you want our audience, uh, my audience, to know, like that maybe they don't know about you? About uh, me? Oh. Yeah. Like, is there is there anything you do in your spare time that that has nothing to do with acting? You know, um, besides living. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm not, I, 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 I did, I've never really been into like the, the show of it all. Like I really love creating. So finding writing and directing is really has been, uh, my truest love of what I've done in this entire business, my entire career it's it's I actually did want to go to film school when I was a kid. Um, I wanted to go to NYU, but I couldn't afford to go. So, you know, put myself through acting school waiting tables and to finally get to this point where I was able to see a dream come to fruition, which is writing something and and directing it and 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 then going on the editing journey and the sound journey and 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 being the full creative that's my passion that yeah. is that's what's really important to me and I, I just want to continue to do that so I don't think a lot of people like when I was sending out the script and you know people didn't even realize I read it I, I wrote it mm -hmm. and I, I think people will really be shocked about this debut as me as a director and a filmmaker so I think people are going to be like oh you know a little surprised by that um, but that's fine Cause it's uh you know, life is about changing and growing. So I think that's something people wouldn't know, but yeah, I've never been into like the being famous part or, or showy. It, it was just a, about getting to the next job. And for me, the jobs that were coming my way weren't as fulfilling as I wanted them to be. So I, I ventured out to do my own thing. Yeah. Now, I mean, I re the first times I saw you was either in Summer of Sam or Spin City. I, yeah. I, it might, I can't remember which one at this yeah. point. Um, so like I had a, you know, I was like, oh, she's awesome, you know, just from Thank those. You. And then, but you didn't follow, you know, the kind of pattern um, 
a lot of young actresses do. I mean, you did, I still know what you did last summer, but it's not like you were one part of that kind of group that was, no. you know, doing all the kid, you know, the, the younger people movies yeah. and stuff like that. What were your agents at the time trying to push you to, to do stuff like that? Um, you know, all through my career, I have to say, I, I, you know, listen, you, you also, when you want to make a living in this business, you have to sometimes take things that necessarily you're, you're, it's not exactly what you want to do, um, creatively. And, and that was my struggle for a long, long time in this career. And definitely your agents push you towards money, you know, um, sure. And, and it is, and it is what it is, but you agree. And I, 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 I just got to a point where I, I just didn't want to do that anymore, but right. yeah, I, I definitely like gravitated towards the more like summer of Sam crash the affair. Like that's, that's really in my wheelhouse that I love. Still there? Yes. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, I accidentally okay. unplugged my thing. I I, have, well, I apologize. It'll no still, worries. What you said will still be on there. Just awesome. <laughs> so I apologize. No worries. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you were in. Uh, you did Crash, um, and I the, the probably the first thing I had probably seen you in a bit. I mean, you've done Blue Bloods and NCIS and The Affair and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The Affair was a show I think I started watching in the beginning and kind of drifted away from. Yeah. So I don't think I saw you on there. But uh, I was watching The Boys and you had a, a six episode arc uh, yes. where you infamously have your head blown up. Exactly. <laughs> That's always <laughs> fun to hear from, from the, the director or the, the creator. Like, we're going to blow your head off. It's like, oh, okay. That sounds great. I remember even in that show, that was that was the first that even that that show is which has plenty of shocking moments. Those were the first truly un completely unexpected, crazy, shocking moments. I know for me as well. Being on set and seeing your like body with a head explode, it was very, very surreal. <laughs> very surreal. It's you know, but that's the that's the fun of this kind of stuff. I remember the first time I actually saw something like that. I did a movie called Dracula 2000 mm -hmm. and it was like, um, oh God. Who was that, Luke Butler. Evans? It was Gerard Butler's first oh, right, movie Gerard and Butler. Johnny Lee Miller. It was a great group right, of people. Right. And it, um, my head gets chopped off and mm -hmm. it rolls across the floor <laughs> and they had to put a, they had to do a cast of my head and that I'm very claustrophobic. So that yeah. was not fun, but the, open up the cabinet in in like um the uh makeup trailer and see my head and my face it was yeah. very strange yeah, very, yeah. very strange did you get to keep a, a a mold no i was like i'm good i was like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm scared that thing is scary That's yeah funny. that was that was weird but yeah was, i can imagine yeah um well you know let, let me go back to the movie you yeah. you you made um what was when did you begin the process of writing and how long did it take you to get to the point where you were actually filming? Oof. It, uh, I had the idea when I was like 16 years old, believe okay. it or not. And then it just stayed with me throughout my career. And every once in a while I'd come back to it and I'd pitch it to somebody and they'd go, great, go do it. And it was like, anybody want to give me any help? And it was like, no. So I, I just, after so many years of being frustrated and unfulfilled creatively, I thought you really can't keep complaining if you're not going to do anything about it. So right. you're just speaking, you're complaining to the air at this point and you're making yourself miserable. So sit down and do it. So that was probably 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And it's taken, it's ta it, it takes time to get, you know, to the place where you're ready to film. And then when you're ready to film, you know, trying to find the money and uh, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, and then you, when did you start filming, filming it? Uh, we filmed a year ago. We ended uh, in almost a year. We okay. filmed last year, February, March. Okay. And uh, did you film in New York or did you film we somewhere filmed in else? Staten Island, New York? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, uh, because I grew up, uh, I grew up, I born in Brooklyn, and then I grew up in Staten Island. So I really wanted it to feel authentic. So we filmed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And you live now, what, in Los Angeles? No, no, no. I'm, 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 I was back and forth there for many years, but no, I've been in New York most of my career. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that works. Then you get to stay home, stay near family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, have, I just. I never got my footing in Los Angeles, unfortunately. It just yeah. never felt like home. That might be part of, too, like, you know, kind of a, a, a purposeful thing to kind of avoid doing the, the grind of yeah. Uh, New York. Yeah, yeah. No, I... I, I mean, I, of, of L.A., sorry. LA. Uh, yeah, the no, business, it's a, the, the it business. is. It, it seems like, yeah, you can't get really away from the business there, but um, New York, you kind of, you really can, and you can kind of just disappear, which is yeah. great, which I enjoy. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite things about, uh, what are some of your favorite things about New York? Um, you know, I love, I love the, the idea that, you know, there's so many different cultures and so many different people from everywhere. Like I said, you really can sink into that and disappear mm-hmm. and you can find wonderful plays, but you can find, you know, every different kind of food you can find, you know, wonderful art, you can find great museums, like it's just, it just feels more culturally fulfilling for me. Um, Yeah, and you know, and then there's beautiful, like, you know, beaches and and, like two hours outside. So it's, I I love it. I love that you can get to Europe quicker. Like I, I just, uh, I just uh, have more of a New York mentality, I think. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so you're from an Italian background. What's what's the best Italian in, in New York? Oh, the best Italian food? Well, because of my celiac disease, I, I can't right. really, unless I'm making it. So that's, right. thank God I can cook. But um, <laughs> Is there a place you could go that, that works out? Not really. I mean, listen, there are places I go, but it's not like I can go and say, oh, what would I like to eat? It's more right, like, what right. can I eat, you know? Right. And that that stinks. Thank, thankfully, like I said, I cook. But um, there was a place, uh, this guy, Frank, who has Little Frank's, Frank's, Daddy. <laughs> like, he's got, like, five restaurants, Italian um, guy. We wanted to be coming friends because I would be at his restaurants all the time. And he's still going strong. And those his restaurants are fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. Well, what, uh, if, you know, if I could ask, when did you, when did you actually discover that you had celiac disease? Um, I was sick a lot of my young life. Like I was sick a, a lot and I, mm-hmm. and, and then in, into my twenties and I, you know, and then beginning of my thirties, I was really not well. And, and then it got worse and got worse. And I would go to the doctor all the time and, and try and get answers and no one gave me any answers. And then I was on a set uh, of Samantha Who and like a tooth fell out of my mouth. Like my hair was falling out. I was really, really, really ill. And I would have uh, major panic attacks and like just really, really ill. And um, finally, one doctor sent me to another doctor. Like the amount of doctors I saw was a joke. And then... um, finally went to someone who said, I'm going to test you for this thing called celiac disease. And within two days, she wrote me back. She called me and she said, you have the worst case of celiac disease I've ever seen. I don't know how you're existing. And I really wasn't existing. Like, because with celiac disease, it kills the villi that surround your small intestine. And those villi are in charge of taking nutrients from food. So basically it was like, I was starving myself and I wasn't getting nutrients. So that's why I teeth were falling out my hair was falling out it was horrible it was really yeah. bad. so that was probably 15 years ago now yeah yeah so that was that so you're so basically the way you're you're making this sound because I, I apologize i don't know a whole lot That's about okay. it. um there's a lot of things now that you know uh when we were kids we did either we didn't know about or they honestly weren't actually going on right. uh, I, I think some a lot of a lot of things are created by the change in the food system. 100% agree. 100%. Yeah. Um, but so you were dealing with this as a young person and you were in an Italian family. What, what was your family like about, like about, you know, how you were do- going through this when they, you know, 
I, I don't know. I, I guess because I don't know how, how it, did you feel like, uh, were you like a, a not eating as much or? No, well, when I didn't know, I mean, uh, you know, our, when I was a kid, I would have a bagel for breakfast, which is gluten, obviously. And then I yeah. would have like leftover pasta or pizza for lunch. Right. And then at dinner, I would have some other form of gluten or pasta or right. breaded chicken or something that I wasn't able to eat. Yeah. And so I was just constantly ill. Yeah. Um, but when I did find out, sorry, my dog is barking. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, but when I did find out, you know, it was so tricky because, you know, they don't, they didn't understand, like you said, like nobody understood what gluten was. And right. so unfortunately it was like, my father would still ask me like, Do, can you have a piece of pita bread? And it was like, no, that's bread. I cannot eat that. So it, it took, it was, it's a learning curve for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, do they make uh, pastas or anything now that uh, yes. uh, work out better? Yes. Like no. chickpea or something like that? Yeah, they make it a brown rice or corn or something like that. So, so yeah, no, there's good, there's good um, products out there now. Okay. So now at least you can kind of, you know, go back to those roots a little bit when exactly. you cook. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I would have to imagine nowadays it's a, it's a little bit easier to go, especially in New York, eat someplace where your dietary needs can be met too. It's definitely people know more about it, but unfortunately with celiac disease, it's only one eighth of a teaspoon. Now think of how small that is. One yeah. eighth of a teaspoon that gets, like I'll be on the floor. So I yeah, have to be yeah. extremely careful. There's certain celiacs that, I mean, all celiacs, it's one eighth of a teaspoon, but I right. particularly, I'm very sensitive. So yeah, I yeah. stay clear from- So what, what, what would you say your diet consists of basically? So I'll have- um, like there's gluten-free like brown rice cereal and there's like, I'll make a chia pudding or I'll make, um, I make my own bread. So I'll have, you know, I can have toast if I make it and, wow. um, you know, lot of salads and, and fish and chicken and meat and stuff like that and vegetables yeah. and salad. Right. Like you, we, we don't realize like there's a world of gluten-free things that are just oh, not yeah. gluten-free, right? But because right. we're so used to, fast and like you know pasta and pizza yeah, that yeah. stuff i can't do unless you know i'm making it but well that I mean, seems yeah. that seems more avoidable than than maybe some some people's you know certain dietary restrictions because while you of course you grew up you you know you with bread and and all mm -hmm. that and, you know it, i'm sure being a new yorker it's difficult to not get a slice of pizza sometimes yeah yeah uh, <laughs> you know uh you Absolutely. know it's still you know, your the world is not closed to you at least. No, it's not. It's not. It, at first, you know, when you get diagnosed, it's 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 very overwhelming. That's why yeah. I wrote the book. Um, it's really overwhelming. But and uh, when you when you understand that, you know, you can't look at the things you can't have. You got to look at the things that you can, and you realize. And also, you don't want to feel ill anymore. So you know, that's your biggest goal is I didn't want to be ill anymore. So it was like, I'll do whatever I need to. Yeah. No, I hear you. Um, well, like, what are, is there anything else? Uh, you know, we, I, we don't, like I said, you're like, you know, I, I kind of was looking around. I, unfortunately I didn't read your book. Uh, I just, okay. I just learned you had a book today. So I, oh, I apologize for that. Okay. Um, you know, I was doing some other research and, you know, there's a couple of notable things, which I know you don't want to talk about, which I don't, I don't like to get into the things that people don't like to talk about. Right. Um, what, what else, what would surprise our audience that, you know, about you is there, do you have like a, I don't know. Uh, I, I think, you know, when they, when people see celebrity, I don't even think of myself that way, but when people see celebrity, they think you have like all the money in the world and this right. really fantastic, beautiful life. And I, I have a beautiful life, but it's a very simple life. Right. Like I, I don't, I'm like, there's not six cars in my driveway. Like that's not, I live yeah, a yeah. very, very simple life. And all yeah. I want to do is tell good stories. That's it. Yeah, like yeah. really it's that simple. So I think when, you know, people see you in a magazine or whatever, or, Oh, she's on TV or the, you know, um, 
people think something else. I actually started teaching again. I've taught throughout my career and um, I, I, I teach online. I put all these classes together and that's been so enjoyable. And I think the reason why the classes do so well is because I'm not some celebrity, you know, I'm just teaching what I've learned all these years. So um, yeah, that's been really fun. I'm gathering it's some sort of something to do with the business or acting, acting, acting classes, but also some writing. And um, there's some for just women. And then there's women and uh, men and women and we'll take apart plays, but it's using what I've learned and, and method exercises to really uncover some, some things that you can use in just life in, in any, in any business. And, um, and yeah, it's been going really well and it's been so enjoyable really, really enjoyable to, to just talk about the work with, with people that are, that are interested in, in doing something creative. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, are you working on anything writing wise, uh, Max, do you, are you mulling something over the, to do that? Yeah. There's a few things that I've been thinking about, but it's been such a journey when, you know, independent, making an independent film is insane. Like I said, so we, we just got through with post, in like December, January, and then it's been all about f film festivals and it's a lot of work. So yeah. um, it's getting to the place now where it's ready to kind of see the world. So I have a little bit more time, but it's been nonstop with yeah. getting the movie done. When uh, do you have any confirmed film festivals yet? I do, but I can't say what it is. In the right. next week, you will know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be able to include that then. Uh, awesome. If it's in with, in with the next week, then yeah, it uh, should be. this is going to go up in time for the film. Uh, Great. Oh, then by, by then it'll be out. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, I'll make sure everybody knows that then. Oh, that'd be great. All right, well, Jennifer, it was a real pleasure talking to you yes, today. Yes, you too. I wish you the best of luck and uh, take you. care, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All See right, ya. bye. Bye.